So, I forgot to bring my GoPro to this uh, shop that I found in El Paso. Absolutely great. Patterson Performance. If you're ever in El Paso, I highly suggest you go down there. I'm going to see if I can uh, get a clip of a couple of the cars that they have in the shop uh, because I'm dropping off the 240 to get some work done. So, as you might be able to tell from the title of this video, the 240 is a piece of crap. It's the best piece of crap I've ever had, or the worst, best car I've ever had. However you want to put it, if you're a nihilist or if you're super positive, it's up to you. So, let's, uh, let's go over what's still wrong with the 240. So, the alternator is no longer jacked up. They actually uh, went through and redid the entire alternator. They painted the things that should have been painted they cleaned uh, down all the things that were dirty uh, and needed to be smooth and clean and shiny. Uh, they put in all new uh, fancy bits. I'm not sure exactly what the components of an alternator are, but they went through and they literally did the same remanufacturing process that uh, companies do on alternators. That's what they did yesterday. Uh, one of the brushes was way too short and one of them was still the same length so that was causing some issues um, also the wiring cowling the the housing whatever uh, was dirty so it was overcharging sometimes and undercharging uh, other bits of the time but getting uh, the alternator refurbished did not fix my issue so another reason why I think it's an issue with the ECU telling the engine to execute certain things is because in order to get the alternator to turn on, it's almost like some old school diesel uh, engine where I have to literally rev up the car past a certain point. I'm not sure exactly what the point is, but just to be safe, I usually rev it up to right around 5K and then immediately you'll hear a difference in the fuel pump where the fuel pump will go into a slightly higher pitch noise and the lights are brighter, everything works slightly better. Uh, and then the car comes back down and uh, it starts charging, I guess. Uh, that seems like it's an issue with the way that the ECU is telling the alternator to turn on and stop using the battery power. Because usually what should happen is as soon as your starter is done doing its thing and the car is started, there should immediately be a switch where it switches immediately to the alternator functioning and providing that charge. But it seems like the battery just continues doing its work, getting the car going, instead of the alternator doing the bulk of that work. And that's, that's one of the issues. So in order to figure out exactly what's causing the breakup still, I'm not sure if it's fuel cut, not sure if it's loss of spark, not sure if it's boost cut yet. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go gauge happy. What that means is I'm going to and get a, a AFR. So I already have the uh, wideband O2 sensor. I already have the gauge. I just need to get it installed. So I'm going to get that spliced into the system. I'm also going to get a voltmeter spliced into the system. That way I can see if uh, it's a loss of charge in the battery that's causing that. I'm also going to get a fuel pressure regulator to see if it's the fuel pump not functioning properly anymore. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, at the same time as all that, I'm also looking into getting a NIS tune. Main purpose behind that is to get a reliable tune on the car uh, and to get a method really of going through and being able to measure out exactly what's wrong with the car that way I can actually read codes because uh, as I'm sure other 240 owners uh, well specifically SR owners uh, that are still running with the stock ECU know there's no OBD2 sensor you're still running on OBD1 and it's really annoying to try to get your codes from a little flashing light uh, I'm gonna end up getting a wiring harness because Shoddy wiring is probably the source of a lot of the issues that I'm having. I'm not sure quite yet if it's the Kuki or Zenki SR. I'm not even sure exactly what the difference between those two would be, but I do know that they have different ECU uh, patch harnesses. 
So that's something that I have to deal with. And I know I'm probably gonna get a little bit of flack from this, but I'm not gonna be doing all this work myself. Uh, I'll try to be helping uh, during the process, but I'm gonna be doing it at Patterson Performance. Why? Because it's an amazing shop. Uh, they specialize specifically in Subarus, so I know that this Nissan isn't really their powerhouse, but they do actually have a couple guys that own 240s and constantly work on them. One of them has a S14 with the exact same SR that I have. Uh, mine makes slightly more power and weighs slightly less, but his is actually reliable, which makes his immediately better. So I'm gonna do all the work at Patterson Performance. It'll almost become a quasi shop car for a little bit, uh, just until all the kinks in the car get worked out. Then after that, I'll have a perfectly functioning 240SX. Hopefully. So what I'm doing right now actually is, I have the 240 on, um, that way the battery charges. Uh, just cause cold starts are crappy when you're out of battery. So, that's what's wrong with the car, that's what I'm looking to improve with the car, and if you like this video, like where the channel's going, don't forget to slap a like on it. Don't forget to leave me a comment if you have something to say to me, I appreciate all comments. Uh, I'm looking into collabing with a couple YouTubers, not huge YouTubers, but definitely bigger than I am. Uh, also looking into uh, getting a new setup. That way I can provide uh, better content to you guys. So once again, if you like this video, slap a like on it. If you want to say something to me, comment. And if you like this channel, like where the channel's going, don't forget to uh, subscribe. With that, I think I'm gonna leave you guys on a quick little cinematic sequence. Peace.